Hamilton's book, you know, Teach and Grow Rich, is that in 1971, the U.S. dollar stopped being money and it became a currency. And the problem with is saving a currency is that currencies are designed to lose value. So you, 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 don't, you don't get ahead by saving money anymore. And that's why the people like me who are, you know, proactive investors can make millions of dollars while the other person who's following the advice of work hard, save money, get out of debt, invest for the long term, and diversify are losing millions of dollars. So that's why your own personal education is important, simply because the rich hijacked education back in the 1900s. And we've talked before, too, how in the industrial age, um, the go-to-school model was working well because the idea was go to school, get a good job, stay there for your entire life, and then you would retire from the company's money or on Social Security. But that now how we're in the information age, that that industrial age model is no longer working. Yeah, neither is neither the pension plans. Like look at General Motors and even Ford. For the first time, their bonds are rated as junk bonds. And as they say, you know, so goes G- as goes GM, so goes America. And there's millions of workers right now who are counting on their pensions that may not be there. And in three years, 2008, the first baby boomer officially begins to retire, and there's approximately 75 million of them. So if you look at Social Security, it starts to have starts to have to pay a thousand dollars per 75 million retirees, baby boomers, that means the monthly bill at $1,000 a month is $75 billion a month. The Social Security cannot cover that. And what that means is that your children will have to pay another like 20 or 40% of their income on, on top of the 50% to pay for the old guys my age who need retirement. So this whole system is based upon an industrial age idea and in 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down and the World Wide Web went up, the industrial age officially ended and the information age began. So that's why it's so important what uh, you know homeschool.com is doing. So I appreciate what uh, all your efforts. So how are we going to educate our children then, for Robert and for Kim, to prepare themselves to succeed in the information age? Well, that's why Rich Dad has a uh, curriculum on the website, richkidsmartkid.com. We also have electronic games and a curriculum, and it gives the young children, it makes them fun. You know, I don't go into the depth I go into to adults, but it makes them fun, and it gives, makes them start to realize that they can take control of their finances. They know the difference between an asset and a liability. See, most people think their house is an asset or their car is an asset. That's not true. If you can read a financial statement, for most people, their house is actually a liability, and so is their car a liability. So why would people call your house an asset and all this, a car an asset? Because it's not your asset, it's the bank's asset. And so those are the things that the financial institutions, the bankers of the world, have not wanted the average person to know. So let's give, let's give our listeners some concrete then uh, advice and steps that they can take. So a uh, number one that I assume would be uh, take a look at your finances. Um, I, I do this regularly with my own family, and I use the... Uh, income and liability statement from the cash flow game. Right, that's the start. Yes, and so take so would you advise us then to take a look at what are your assets, what money is coming into your life, and where how much money is going out of your life? Right, an asset is very. My, my rich, they gave me a very simple definition. Assets put money in your pocket, whether you work or not. So for my wife and I, we've been married almost twenty years now. In that time, we've. We have $300,000 a month coming in every month, whether we work or not. And my goal is to make it a million a month. And it's really easy to do, very simply, because I don't spend that much money. I just keep reinvesting my cash flow. And it, so we started with nothing 10, 20 years ago, and now you know, it's, not, it's not Donald Trump's money, but we can live on that. So you just start with that, but it begins with knowing assets from liabilities. Again, it's words and vocabulary. Know the difference. And understand a financial statement. Do you realize that most people do not know what a financial statement is? Yet when you go to a bank, you know, your bank has, my banker has never once asked me for my report card. My banker has never asked me if I had good grades or what school I went to. What a banker asks you for is your financial statement because they want to see your financial IQ. And most people have no idea what a financial statement is. When a banker looks at their, if you say to a banker, I don't have a financial statement, then they have you fill out a credit application. And the moment they do that to you, you pay a higher interest rate. 
So step number one, then, is take a look at your uh, current finances and find out where you are. I suspect most people will probably discover that they um, are in debt, yeah, that yeah, they yeah. have well, more money going bad. out than they have coming in. Yeah, debt's not bad as long as it's, it's, there's good debt and bad debt, okay? Debt's not like I have millions of dollars in debt, but that debt makes me rich. Most people are in debt, but that debt makes them poor. So it really knows, it starts with understanding income expenses, assets, and liabilities. Really simple. You can read it in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You get the basic model. You know, that book was written for a nine-year-old kid. I think that's why it sold 23 million copies. But it's a very simple book on the basis of financial literacy, and it's really literacy is what we're after. And I love the cash flow game, too, because as you said, when you're playing the game, uh, your your brain doesn't realize that it's just playing a game. And so you get comfortable dealing with these large numbers and making these investment decisions. Yeah, and it really is. I mean, my wife uses the term all the time. It's just a game. And I look at life, my investments, as a game. Sometimes we win and sometimes we lose, but every time we get smarter. And unfortunately, those who have been brainwashed by the financial system to just turn your money over to these so-called experts at mutual funds, that means you learn nothing. I mean, that's the worst crime of just turning your money over, investing to the, for the long term in mutual funds, is you don't learn anything. You just learn how to be a stooge, passing, your money, passing the buck to somebody else who doesn't, is not any smarter than you are. There's living proof. There is statistics that show that not one so-called mutual fund expert has beaten the S&P 500 consistently. I mean, they don't know any more than you, but yet they're charging you a fee to manage your money. I don't mind the fee part. What I do mind is you learn nothing because most people know nothing and they're afraid of making a mistake. So that's my way. My wife always says, you know, start really small. Her first investment was a $45,000 house. She put $5,000 down and she made $25 a month. Today, she's doing multi-million dollar deals because the process is the same. It's just a number of zeros went up. And that's what we encourage. And that's why I really didn't like schools because they punish you for making mistakes. Yet the only way we learn is by making mistakes. I learned to ride a bicycle to make mistakes, and I flew from the Marine Corps. I, I made a lot of mistakes until I became a good pilot. The same thing with investing. I made a lot of mistakes until I became a proficient investor. I love one of your uh, quotes is, who said you get to win all the time? When someone had said that they'd had an investment and it went sour, you're like, well, gosh, I expect that out of ten of my investments, seven or eight of them, I mean, seven or eight are going to be good and two might be bad. Yeah, and guess what? I learn more from the bad investments, you know, because that makes me smarter. And that's the attitude. It's 90% at Most people are so afraid of making a mistake, oh, what if I lose some money, that they turn their money over to experts, like put it in a bank, or to a mutual fund, and then they, they, what they lose out on is they lose out on their education. Which is why kids are so good with money, too, is because they don't have the, the fears. Yeah, the fear that's been drummed in by the adults. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's where the cash flow game lets you, you know, have a good time playing with paper money as well as learning the basics of investing as well as understanding how a financial statement works. Because a financial statement is the key. Income expenses, assets, and liabilities, that is the key. So then one of the next steps then, then we've analyzed our current expenses, and then we want to start thinking about uh, trying to move into the right-hand side of the quadrant, uh, turning our um, work into a a business. And your definition of a true business is that you can walk away from it and it still continues to bring in income. Is that correct? That's correct. And then I suppose the third step then is uh, raising our children, and sometimes we'll do for our children what we wouldn't do for ourselves, so teaching them about uh, doodads. I, I love your word doodads. You know, do you really want to spend your money on, you know, or do you want to use credit cards for doodads, or do you want to use debt only for investments? Well, the thing is, uh, uh, the beauty of a game, of the cash flow game, is as a kid's having fun, every time they buy a doodad, the game punishes them. So you don't have to tell them anything. The game punishes them. And so many adults have told me that there was one thing their child got is the negative value of like hundred dollar sneakers or the new sunglasses or the or the cappuccino you know or whatever the kids spend their money on and that's why kids will go to the shopping center and, and one mother said to me it's now really a pain because the kid always says to me mom don't buy that that's a doodad and the kid is now thinking the child is now thinking about investing versus wasting their money on doodads and instead of just giving our children then uh, training them to think okay they see something that they want asking the question what can I do to earn the money to afford that? 
And Sharon had talked about how important delayed gratification in is as well, since we live in a world where there's instant gratification all the time. Yeah, that's correct, and that's why I said my wife has one child, 